All right, I think I'm ready for day two. <laughs> I didn't like that light on back there, so. Go ahead and turn my laptop on in case I need anything. So as promised, I'm gonna start with number three. Excuse me. And if I seem distracted, I am listening for timer in my kitchen so my food will be ready. <laughs> so number three, God's will, healing, is working in you. And what is the scripture with that one? Philippians 2.13 For it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Actually, I think we covered this one, didn't we? We go to Philippians in my Bible and see. Philippians. Philippians 2, 13. And let's, there is actually a footnote on that one. It says, I used to ask God to help me. Then I asked if I might help him. I ended up by asking him to do his work through me. And that was written by Hudson Taylor. But what's the... What's the, uh, what's the context here? Uh, right here, 213... I, I'm not going to be able to get that on camera. Why am I even trying? The little subtext above it says light bearers. And that's above 13 or 12 and 13. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence, but only, or not in my present only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling for it's for it is God's for it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure and Charles Spurgeon has a context on this as well it says preach Christ or nothing don't dispute or discuss except with your eye on the cross basically you know, like I said before, I don't like to dispute or anything like that. So let's go to number four. The spirit of life is making your body alive. And this is in Romans 8.11. It says, And if the spirit of him who raised Christ from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. Let me see what else I can find on Romans 8.11. It I would like to actually do more with this, I think, with this particular Bible because of the subtext. and uh, Romans 8.11. I don't see any subtext on it. Alright, so I think that's pretty clear, is that if, you know, God raised Christ from the dead, and, you know, he, he can also heal you as well. Alright, let me see. Alright, let's go to Romans 8.8, 8, actually, and then we'll read all the way down through 11. Actually, we'll go to 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, now, if anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ, 
he is not his, with a capital H saying his as a God. Right, where'd I go? And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit of life, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Jesus or raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Okay. Now that there's a little more context, it seems to make more sense. So let's go ahead and go to number five. Uh, somewhere around six minutes, I'm going to go check on my food. Actually, no. Somewhere around, like, nine minutes. I'm sorry. God's promises are for you. 2 Corinthians 1.20 For all God's promises are yes in Him. And, and so, through Him, we can say amen to the glory of God. Let's bring up 2 Corinthians a lot of these actually need uh, need their subtext. What was that of oh, Second Corinthians one twenty? Wow, I'm going way past it. Excuse me. Okay, there would be a. I would have to go a lot deeper in this. I might have to go a lot deeper into it another day. Yeah. But it pretty much says that all of God's promises are yes. And all we have to do is say amen to accept it. Obviously, it's a little more complex, complex than that, but pretty much if God says he'll do it, he's already done it. And this is where I was hoping to get into some stuff here. Just give me one second. Alright, so my food's ready out there. I'm going to let it cool down some. <laughs> Alright, where were we? Number six, right? And let me go ahead and bring up... Go ahead and bring it up in, the, in my Bible here. Yeah, Matthew 5 is a long chapter. Anyway, so, number 8, or number 5 actually, number 6 to be precise, apparently I'm not good at this today. I also, well, probably because I'm hungry and I'm also thinking I have to fix a computer later for a customer, but anyway, I'm trying not to be distracted. It is God's will for you to be healed. That's what it says right there. And the verse is Matthew 8, 2 through 3. The man with leprosy came and knelt before him, Jesus, and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched him, touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately he was cleaned of his leprosy. And, uh, let me see here, is there... Okay, there is a lot of, uh, context on this that I'm not going to be able to get into. But it wants me to see John 5, 8. Mark and Mark, Luke and John, they heard the word and passed it on. What did I say? 5, 8? Or no. 8, 58 to be exact. It says, Jesus said to him, 
So then, most assuredly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. And in the context on that, Jesus was affirming that he was God manifest in the flesh. He is the great I am, the eternal one who revealed himself to Moses in the burning bush. And it also wants me to see John eleven twenty five for some reason. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection of love. Resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who, can, who is come into the world. And I'm going to leave you with number seven and I'm gonna go ahead and bring up the tomorrow is going to be pretty good which is number eight we'll leave you on seven right now which let me bring my Bible to the word that it tells me to bring but just in case there's any I think I want to see. Alright. Number seven. Obey God's word and be healed. Exodus 15, 26. If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord and do what is right in his heart, give ear to his commandments and keep all his stat uh, statutes. Statuous. I will put none of the disease on you which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you, Jehovah Rafi. I believe that's pretty. I believe that's pretty uh, simple. But it tells me to see Isaiah fifty three five, which some of you probably already know, and as do I. I'm having a hard time finding it. Twenty-three. There was actually another one in there, which was First Peter something. I gotta go find that again. So it said. Deuteronomy, no, it was Exodus 15, 26. Don't mind me, it's been a long day. Who wants me to see Isaiah 53, 5, which says, He was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. And I just realized I was just leaning over like that. I'm sorry. And it wants us to see First Peter two twenty four. Uh, First Peter two twenty four. First Peter two twenty four. Who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth. Actually, you know what? Let me start at twenty one. For to this you were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. Who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth. And 23, who, when he reviled, did
did or was reviled did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously. Him and H is capital H, God. Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree that, that we, having died to sins, might, turn page here, Live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. There is a footnote under 24. This, the Messianic prophecy fulfilled. But he was wounded for our transgress. Okay, that just quotes uh, Isaiah 53, 5, which we already read. And it also gives us a couple verses in Matthew, which we probably already know. But I want to give you a more recent example of what's going on. When, uh, I'm going to go back to my worksheet here. Obey God's word and be healed. If you watched yesterday, you know that I had uh, had said that these simple principles can be applied to more than just your physical health, but also your finances. If you obey God's word, you will see uh, you will see that what He says is true. Um, I don't know how many realize this, but I have not been doing well financially for probably the last six months. I've been having a hard time finding full-time employment, and it has really been an issue financially. Um, I was in a very hard spot, and I had gotten some news... That I was not expecting. Uh, let's just say a... I'm not ready to talk about it at the moment. But a major change in my life that came unexpectedly. Um, and then alongside that... I would gotten a letter from my landlord saying... You have till this date to get out of my apartment. Because you are not paying... Because I had been paying him, but the employment I had did not even make up what my monthly rent would normally be. I, had not, I have not really talked about that publicly, and uh, <laughs> I'm still not comfortable talking about that publicly. So, when I got th that news... I went into major freak out mode. The, oh my god, what am I going to do? Where am I going to go? And all that. And what, I, I started driving to my mom's house because I didn't, I didn't want to be alone that day. Which is very odd for me because I'm kind of a loner. Well, not really a loner, I'm just an introvert. And, uh, on my way to her house, I pulled over on the side of the road, and I'm not going to say I was angry at God, because I wasn't. I actually decided to put all my trust in Him, and I just basically started crying, to be honest with you. And I'm not a crier, so if I'm crying, you know I'm hurt. And I said, God, if you have a plan, now would be a good time to show it. And up to that point, I had been putting in job applications on a site called Indeed. And I had Ended up getting a call back a couple days after all this 
from a company called NFI, which is who I'm working for now. Although Friday is my last day there. And they, you know, offered me a job, which I'm doing, which is not a bad paying job. And I talked to my landlord, and obviously I'm still in the same house I was. I mean, if you've ever watched any of my videos on my other channel, you know that this is my bedroom. <laughs> and I'm sitting on my bed. But my landlord's like, well, if this is what you'll be making and this is what you'll be able to pay, then we're fine. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> but I ended up going to a job fair as well. Where, actually I went to two job fairs. My girlfriend got a job from the other one. And I got a job from the second one. <laughs> but... The, I ended up finding a company that's right down the street from my house doing the exact same work I did when I got laid off from the other company. And doing the exact same work except it's a lot easier there and it's a different product. It's a little less pay than I was making at the company I got laid off from. But my other, but that job was 45 minutes away. This one is about seven. You know what? Make it nine minutes away. And he is putting, the job where I'm at now was good money to get myself back where I'm at or where I need to be. The uh, other job is a little, just little more pay which I actually debated whether or not I was going to take it and uh, so and I, I started looking at them, like you know they offer better they offer a lot better benefits the benefits are a lot better actually and I'm you may be able to get what I'm I'm not ready to talk about it, but you may be able to understand what I'm going to say when I say which is going to be becoming very important in my life very soon. And also, it offers a better opportunity for advancement and also, you know, promotion. Also, after 60 days, it's a dollar an hour raise, which makes it quite a bit more than what I make it now. <laughs> But when you follow God's word, he will put you where you need to be. When you, But you also have to put in work yourself. You can't just, you know, I mean, God's not going to reward laziness. So, <laughs> if you put in the work that he asks you to do and you follow his word the way he wants you to follow it, he will do what he promises he will do. And with that, I have a laptop to fix. I'm not going to record it for my other channel because I am I just don't feel like doing it. I feel like doing it in a more comfortable setting. And uh, I also have food waiting in the kitchen for me. So, I thank you for watching. I pray that this blesses you. As much as it's blessed me. Because I'm looking at God's word. I'm seeing. It was just something I. I really have not been doing as much as I need to do. And this is helping me. And I pray that it's helping you. And I pray that you are blessed by it. As much as I am blessed by it. So thank you for watching. Have a blessed day.